Okay, good morning, Honor Civil Engineering and Architecture. As I mentioned before, we are designing skyscrapers, and we don't only want to design a skyscraper, but we want to design one that's realistic, and we want to design one that's modern. So I'm not just talking about stacking 40 floors on top of each other and calling it a day. Um, that would be a very boring skyscraper, um, and it doesn't really fit well in the 21st century. If you look at skyscrapers today, um, they have a very sleek look to them, a lot of them. Um, they are, they're like the pinnacles of design. Um, and I'm hoping that we can get some pretty sweet designs from this class as well. So the first video is going to be a recap of designing your steel beam structure, and I'll show you a few new tricks. Um, but once you're finished the first video, go ahead and design the skeletal structure of your building. Um, once you've done that, uh, later on this week a second video is going to be put up where I am essentially going to show you how to encase your building um, either in concrete or in curtain wall or glass in a sense. And we're going to mold it to fit the structure of your building. So getting started on this recap, let's go to Revit, New, Project, and we want to make sure we're on Architectural Template click on that, hit OK, and it'll create us this look over here. Now like I mentioned before, we want to have our skyscraper have some kind of tangible connection to the real world. So it's an oftentimes a good idea to base our skyscraper off of one of similar category. So like I said before, we have a 40 story skyscraper. Um, so let's go ahead and try to find something that's 40 stories. And I'm just going to show you how to find them. Um, it's up to you to actually find one that will work. So I typed in Wikipedia skyscrapers by height. It took me to this page. And now I'm going to try to figure out how many, how many meters is a story or something. So I already have this one selected because I clicked on it before. I'm going to click on that one again. And then it's going to list a bunch of skyscrapers. Now not all of these are going to be the best option, but I have a few already clicked on. So let me click on 100 Montgomery Street. It's going to pull up a skyscraper. And some information about it. It's 25 stories. Eh. So good to know. Not quite 40, so this isn't the one I'm looking for. Um, if you don't quite find 40, but find something close, you can use that. Um, but 15 stories is quite significant. So this wouldn't be a good example. But we also know the floor area. And that's what I was looking for. The floor area of this structure is 424,000 square feet. What that means is if I took this over 25 floors, I would have a rough starting surface area for this. So let me go ahead and activate my calculator. And I'm going to put 42,000 over 25 feet, or 25 stories. And I'm getting about 16,900. So you know, the, the first floor is usually a little bit larger than the other floors. So let's just round this up to 18,000. So 18,000, what times what gets me 18,000? That's like something I need to figure out. So, let me pop open a paint file just to kind of show you what I'm doing. Um, and let's draw this in here. So I'm trying to get to 18,000. Um, and I'm going to have like a square type base. So the base of my skyscraper is going to be like a square. So 18,000 equals x squared. So x has to be equal to the square root of 18,000. OK, so I'm going to do 18,000. And I'm going to take the square root of it. So 134, um, 134 feet in each direction. Um, since I'm going to be working in multiples of 12, let's say I'm going to have 12 feet spacing between my columns and girder, girders 12 feet. 
what's the closest I can get? So I'm going to write the 134 here. 134 feet, that's going to be this side as well as this side to get me that 18,000. And if I divide 134 by 12, eleven point one six. So I'm just gonna say eleven eleven grid lines. So I rounded down, but that's because I rounded up a few times. Eleven grid lines. Okay. So eleven grid lines, twelve feet apart, that's gonna give me the correct surface area for my skyscraper. Um, now these cameras might get in the way, so I'm actually gonna select and move a few of them a little bit back and I can always move them as long as they're at their appropriate side it will still be fine. And now let's start making our grid structure. So go over to the architecture tab, grid, click on that, and we are essentially going to draw in our grid um, structure like I said. So I drew the first one, then I'm going to click on this option over here, pick line, click on that. I'm going to set the offset to 12 feet because that's what my skyscraper is going to be based off of. Um, for your projects, you can space your beam column girder system anywhere between 10 and 20 feet. doesn't really matter. Um, if you want to do 20 feet, you can. Um, it should still be fine, but do not go more than 20 feet. Uh, and if you feel like 20 is a bad multiple of what you're doing, uh, then just avoid it. So I'm going to go ahead. That's four, five, six, eleven. So I have eleven in that way. I know that's enough. Let me go ahead oops, and draw it in now vertically. That one turned out a little bad. Oh, it's because I have the offset still in place. Let me switch that back to zero for a second. and draw this out. Okay, so I have some excess over here, not an issue. It's not going to show up in the final design, but I do have an 11 by 11 matrix over here. Which means that if I design a skyscraper utilizing this area, it will at least hold somewhat true. Even though, like I said before, this is just a slightly crude representation of what we should actually be doing, um, which is calculating the entire forces of the building. Now, because I'm lacking a lot of the knowledge about how much exactly a skyscraper um, weighs, it's kind of hard to calculate loads that we need to factor in for the bottom floor. Okay, so now that we have this in place, let's go ahead and start putting together our structure. I'm going to go over to Structure tab, go over to Beams next. I'm going to select that, and then I'm going to go to the On Grid option and I'm going to select my beam structure. I'm going to click finish and it might give you this error over here. No beams were added to the document. Um, do you want to exit the command? Um, I can hit yes because no beams were added so what's the point? Um, and something we need to check beforehand is our range of view. So inside the properties window you want to go over to your view range, click on edit, and you want to make sure that it is always one level below. So the bottom right now, I'm going to say one level below, the other one, one level below, and I'm going to hit apply. Hit OK. Um, if you don't have this properties tab over here, just go over to view, click on that, and then go over to your, where is it, user interface, and you want to turn your properties back on. 
just in case you lose it. Okay. Okay. And let's actually switch over to column and not do the beams because I just forgot the beams don't have anything to rest on at this moment. So clicking on column, that's the vertical thing. Um, we're going to make sure it's vertical. I'm going to show you slanted in a second. Um, and we're going to put them at grid. So at grids. I'm going to select the grid structure and I'm going to hit finish and it will create the grid structure. So if I go to my 3D view, you'll notice that everything is in place. You'll also notice that these are set currently at nine feet. Um, we can adjust that and we can do it floor by floor, whatever, um, however you want, but usually 10 feet is a good, good amount. Um, so I can go right click on one and I can select all instances in view or an entire project and then over here I can simply adjust it to 10 feet. Okay, heading back over here. Now that we have our columns in place, let's go ahead and add our beams. So I'm going to select beams, I'm going to select grid, and I'm going to select the grid structure. Um, this time I can definitely see the beams were applied so I'm going to say finish and it's going to create the structure. So that's looking pretty good right now. Okay. Now in terms of my skyscraper, maybe the second floor is just like the first floor. So a quick way we can speed this, or actually let me show you one more floor and then I'll show you what I mean. Um, let's go over to second floor. Um, on second floor right now we're going to have nothing showing which is a problem if you're trying to build off of a unique design somewhere in your building. So first thing first, we have to adjust the view range. So scroll down to view range and edit it. And like I mentioned before, you need to make sure the bottom and this uh, view depth are one level below where they have to be. So one level below, whoops, one level below, apply. Okay. and it doesn't seem to have done anything so let's go one level lower so this and I'm gonna make that unlimited now because it wasn't really working hit apply okay there we go uh, so there we go we got a very very crisp screen maybe too crisp um, but it gives us a working area so I'm gonna do the same thing let's apply my columns first at the grids select the grid structure finish, give it a second, boom, go over here, add my beams on grid, select the grid structure, finish, and boom. So checking it now, we have a two-story. Um, and like I said, the columns are coming one foot short. Um, don't worry about that till the end of the project because it might be something that we just constantly spend adjusting. Um, the only reason to worry about it is if you want larger than 10 foot floors, um, in that case you will want to adjust it as you go. Anyway, that concludes uh, this first video. Um, in the second video I'm going to show you some nifty tricks to help speed up this process as well as some angled beams. Till then.